hi. Uh, my name is Heather, and in the SCA, I am Matilda Slally Brer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven people. Nice. This is a good sized class. I'm looking forward to this. Now, the very first time I did a ever, it ran for three hours. Luckily, it was planned to go for three hours, but I'm honestly not sure if I can condense my blabber into only an hour. But I'm from the Middle Kingdom. I made my first scroll in April of 2000, and I've been scribing off and on ever since. So I won't say that I've been a scribe for 20 years. It's been 20 years, but I've been scribing for probably 15 of those, maybe-ish, give or take. So what we're going to do, as the thing says on my window here, is a canthus leaf illumination, and we're going to be operating from the model book, the Getchikin model book. I don't know if any of you have heard of that before, but before we start, if you can take the window that says Heather Bungard Janney, hover mm -hmm. your mouse over it, and there'll be little buttons there, and you should be able to pin that window. I've and if not, know. the Rum Chancellor can pin it for me. Yep, I've got you pinned. Uh, what we see okay. right now is the um, uh, the printout, and we see your hand as well. Okay. Unfortunately, I only see me in the big window. I'm not able to get it to to pin. It looks like speaker view right now. Let me. Okay, let me remove that real quick. One moment. Let's see, I've got it pinned. It does say. Can you make me co-host? Maybe I can pin it. I can, I think. Let me see, one second. Okay. Thank you all for being patient. I really appreciate it. Do you know, Jamie, it says this is pinned. I have that. <clears throat> Do you want me to make your face or your paper co-host? Uh, oh, whichever one will let me make this big. I guess if you want to make my face co-host and uh, if that'll let me, yeah, my face, please. All right, let's Because that will let me pin my, my paper. Okay, there you go. And yes. Have well, is it letting you now? Okay. Yes, it is. Is that working Thanks. for everybody? Can you all see it now? No, I see you. Uh, it looks like it's still on speaker view. You you could try a uh, share screen from that computer as well. Well, share screen will just share my computer screen and not necessarily Where's that at? Or on the user. what we've got on my phone. Do you see up at the top of your computer speaker view and gallery view? I see gallery view. I'm in speaker view right now. Click gallery view. Gallery view. Okay. Let's that's, see if that's that on the on the user's gallery view shows me all your smiling faces okay my yes. paper is pinned you can make a little bit of noise dear we're still overcoming some technical difficulties you don't have to tiptoe let me uh, <laughs> i'm gonna unpin your video and then pin it again and see if it'll do that okay how about now well i'm still showing my paper as pinned Okay. Let me go to speaker view. Yeah, it's still showing. Is it, it's working for me, but it's not working for anybody else. Okay. What are uh, my other folks on here? Like, what I'm seeing is uh, her paper really big. Are you guys seeing that as well? Uh, I only oh. see her face. Hmm. Yeah. I, can, I see her computer, but I can't. I, I, her face and her computer, but but just the same size as everyone else. Okay. Let me try something else real quick here. I'm gonna go back into gallery view. Now, can you switch? Can can those of you playing along at home? Are you able to switch between gallery view and speaker view? Yes. Is it? Yes. Okay. If you switch to speaker view, does it jump to whoever? My... Oh, it would just let me put uh, when I went from gallery view. Um, it let me pin it again. Okay. Right. Good. Do you guys all see the large paper now? No. No. Still no. <laughs> If you can go mouse ah, over. Yay! I, it, it, there you yes. go. Oh, Where somebody go? got it. Yep. Yeah. We're getting All right. back up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Andreas can edit this past like three minutes out, so no problem there. <laughs> we 
got time. It's fine. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Penny may be pretty tall. All right. So I sent along a link to the Getting in Model book, which is online and digitized. It's not very big or high resolution, but it is there. And it's got a translation of all the lovely German that tells you how to draw and shade these leaves. They assume that you know how to draw the leaves. The book itself is more about how to paint and shade. So I had figured that that would be how I would be teaching this class, but I've had a number of people go, oh, I'm looking forward to learning how to draw these. So we're gonna take a couple minutes and we're gonna look at drawing them. I'm going to set that aside. This is just an artist trading card because I didn't want to intimidate myself and I didn't want to intimidate anybody else. I'm using a number two pencil because it's dark enough people should be able to see what I'm doing on camera. If it's not, let me know and I'll make it darker. It works just fine in my last class. So what I did is I made a curvy line that goes up and then down and sort of flips a little at the end. It's okay if it's uneven. It's not going to be a perfect wave. This is going to be the center of your leaf more or less. There's two ways to draw these leaves. One of them is twisty spirally, and the other is what I call flippy, where it comes back and forth. So this first one is gonna be a flippy leaf. They're actually the easier ones to draw. What you do, you have, this is sort of your stem, the center vein of your leaf. You come out, and out and in and then you cross over and come out and out and out and cross over one last time and you finish that side of the leaf you see how this is flipping back and forth rather than spiraling then you do the other side And this one is not going to cross. We don't want that. It's going to come up here and, and go into hiding. And this one is going to start way back down here because we're showing the other side of the leaf. And this one is also going to start way down here and then finish. So what you have, you've got this center vein here that is always visible, and we can go back and adjust it a little bit, like so, and like so, and like so, when we go in to paint it. Um, the way that a flippy leaf looks when it's painted is like this. It comes in, it flips up, it flips back down. Does that make sense to people so far? Okay. If you have any questions, feel free to unmute and ask. I don't mind interruptions at all. It's a little bit easier than feeling like I'm talking to an empty room. I didn't understand when you said this second line is not going to cross the center line or something. Uh, so when I did this first one here, I zigzagged and then I crossed over the center. And this is visible. This is the inside of the leaf right here. This one is not gonna cross over in that way. We're not gonna go and keep going. We're gonna go and then stop and then hop over here and continue and stop and then hop over here and continue. Does that make more sense? If not, not really. it's it's uh, it's also hard to see because it's uh it's like two inches on my screen. Oh yeah. So I really can't see your details. Here's what we'll do. We'll make a giant one. So that's your center stem ish. And the first one comes out and crosses over.
And so it crosses back and forth. It's all one continuous motion. You see that part, right? Yes. Okay, so the next part is not a continuous motion. We're gonna come up here and then disappear behind this leaf. So we'll come up and up and up and vanish. And then down here is where we will start again. Come up, come up, come up and vanish. And then we hop back down again, come up and vanish. So this all here is one side of leaf. Does that make a little bit more sense? Good, I'm really glad. I'm seeing people nodding their heads, so I'm really praying that that means that this is working for people. So it vanished behind and then it picked up on the other side lower than the vanishing place? Yes. Yeah. Picked up yes. there? Because it's, because it's wrapping around. This is also, I probably should have had it disappear clear back here rather than up here. So that's, that's my fault. And I've run out of large paper to work with. I can pull out this. I don't know if this is very visible or not, but this is a better one. You draw your wave line as step one. Step two. crosses over and crosses over. Now these other lines don't cross over because they're going to disappear behind the flippy of the leaf. So it disappears about here and then you pick up because you're making that edge of leaf visible again, you hop, you pick up down here. and this one disappears, and you pick up back here, and that's your leaf. Does that make more sense to people now? More or less? Okay, oh, yeah. so that is a flippy leaf, and this will be my teaching guide when we get to painting and shading. Now let's do a spirally leaf. They're a little harder. Hopefully mine turns out. You also start with a wave, but where this one crossed this way and then crossed back again, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna cross here, we're gonna draw our lobes of our leaf, and we're gonna cross here and then stop. And come back a little ways. and cross again in the same direction. So instead of going up and down, we're going up and up. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, that's what makes it twist and spiral is that the, is that the, the, the curve is going in the same direction every time. And you can continue this indefinitely. You can make a big long border on your scroll that spirals like that. And you can also make a flippy leaf that extends indefinitely, but this is how you do a spiral. Could you do that one on a larger piece of paper as well? It was really helpful last time. Yeah, sure. Uh, do I have any larger pieces of paper? Thank you. This, this is why these classes work with people talking back to me because I learn what's working and what's not. So step one is draw your wave. We're gonna cross here and we're gonna cross here most likely, if I'm guessing. So you draw a lobe of your leaf, a lobe of your leaf, you cross over and you stop. You hop back down here. And you cross over here. You hop back down here and you finish it. 
and that is one side of leaf. And that should do the other one. They generally match, they don't have to, I have discovered. This can disappear, it's going to disappear behind the twist. Gonna disappear behind the twist. Wait a minute, something's not right here. I've been doing this a long time, but I haven't been doing acanthus leaves as long as I've been scribing in general. But you see how it disappears behind the twist here. This point is very important. That point, that point, those are important areas. So you get a leaf that is one color and then it changes to another color and then it changes back. Does that work for people? Does that make sense now on a larger scale? Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful, I am very pleased. Spiral leaves are harder for me to draw because I'm used to being able to just go this way and then this way and then this way and it's one big long continuous line. So to me the flippy leaves are a little bit easier than the twisty leaves. Those are technical terms. So I'm going to come back here and finish this one. That's my twisty leaf. We are going to paint a flippy leaf because that is the source material that I'm working from happens to be a flippy leaf. If you go to this link that I gave you and it's in the event link as well, the getting and model book is shown in its entirety and several of the leaves are spiral twisty leaves. This one happens to be a flippy leaf. So that's what we're working with. If you want to follow along for the painting bits, I'm going to use blue, yellow ochre, red, and white. Hope you got your water ready, because that's, that's what we're going to do next. Which leaf am I using here? Ah, this is all scribbled in. There we go. You're fine, dear. My husband, we are in the kitchen right now and my husband is putting away groceries, but I'm pretty sure my microphone has noise suppression. So I'm not sure you can actually hear anything that he's doing. I don't hear anything. <laughs> it makes it more fun. All the people he get to come can, together. He says he's sorry, but I don't think anybody can. No, not no. A problem at all. Oh, no hearing him on this end. Great, thank you. Nobody can hear you, dear. You can, you can party hardy. He has, he, just give me two thumbs up. So I'm going to use ultramarine for my blue and yellow ochre for my yellow. And this dark sort of purpley red, I think is going to work better than a bright warm red, if you can see the difference in those two reds down here. You might have already said this, but are you using um, uh, gouache or? I'm using gouache. Okay, thank you. I did not say, thank you for asking. You get them wet. I got them wet ahead of time when the class was not quite off the ground yet. Hopefully this blue isn't too dark to show the effect. I thought this one was especially neat. They do, um, uh, the, the Getting and Model book is all about color theory and shading techniques. And they do different shading methods for different colors. 
the green, for example, you shade with a darker green, the purple you shade with a darker purple, the blue you shade with red, which I thought was really intriguing. And that's why we're doing this particular leaf and not the other leaves in a getting and model book. They have several different colors. They've got purple and minium. Minium being an orangish red, it's a red lead. And the purple is a very pale purple, so it's a very striking effect. Uh, the red and green leaf, the red is kind of a burgundy color. It's really nice. And then the blue, they just say blue, and then the, the yellow, they don't call it yellow, they call it aura musicum. And if you look here, it's a fairly dark yellow, at least in the surviving source. I don't know if it's brighter when it's brand new or not. The, uh, there's a recipe in the book for how to make aurum musicum, and it involves mercury and other things. So I personally am probably never going to find out what aurum musicum looks like when it's fresh. I have this thing about not poisoning myself. I'm, I'm quirky that way. So you got one, sh one part of your flower, one part of your leaf is blue. It flips over, so this is not going to be blue. And then it flips over again up here. Incidentally, I'm filling this in with a number one brush. I tend to like to work fairly large. I don't like to do teeny tiny brushes. If you were in my class on Saturday, I said that a brush that, can, that comes to a sharp point is more valuable than a teeny tiny brush. And this is a hill I'm willing to die on. And it was, I, I got to explain that. The belly of your brush is the body of your bristles, everything except for the point. And if you have a brush with a good belly, it can hold tons and tons and tons of paint and you can just go and go and go. And if it comes to a nice sharp point, not only can you go and go and go, but you can later go back and do details that just go forever. For example, these nice smooth curves, I don't have to go a quarter inch wet my brush, a quarter inch, wet my brush, a quarter inch. You know, you're never gonna get a smooth curve if something like that goes on. My hand shaking on this video is probably the funniest thing I saw in the, I went back and I watched the YouTube video of um, my, my three hour class and it cracked me up how many times my arm just jiggles on camera as I'm rinsing out my brush. So this is just yellow ochre. My teaching aid that I made ahead of time, where'd it go? I used a nice bright yellow and I'm not sure I got the right effect. I'm not sure I got what they were really looking for. There we go. That does look nice. That's a good combination, I think. How many people are painting along and how many people are just observing? I'm curious. I'm painting and having Yay. fun. I'm glad somebody's painting and I'm definitely glad that you're having fun. I'm trying it with colored pencils. That works. I'm also using colored pencils. Yeah, it's probably a lot easier when you're trying to watch something and you don't want to make a mess and you're on your computer and everything else. That's a good idea. I'll have to remember that. <laughs> I'm considering teaching more classes in the next available rum session. Um, this one was scheduled. They, they scheduled 10 days worth of classes at a time here in the Middle Kingdom for the virtual sessions. You can teach up to two classes per session. I'm looking forward to teaching maybe a gilding class or a black hours illumination style. There we go, that looks lovely. Please do, that would be great. Please, black I'll hours be there. is gorgeous, oh my God. So much fun. You need a couple specialized materials. You need some metallic paints. But if you have them, oh, 
I adore the black hour style. That and the gilding one would be good too. I, I took one, but I was a little questionable about some of the materials she was using because mm. it really made her pergamena and stuff like that very bumpy and very. That's the perg, honestly. Yeah, it, yeah, it was just. Perfect. Yeah, she was using some stuff I, I had never heard used before. It was, it was kind of interesting to see someone else's take on it, but I'd like to see what yours is too because mm, yours sure. is, your stuff's beautiful. Well, thank you. Gosh. Um, I am currently replacing my kit. Um, I, I lost my kit in a house fire back in January and I'm getting new materials. And so I'm not sure I'm ready to teach a gilding class until I have tested my new gilding supplies because some of them are a little different than what I had before. Okay, this blue is mostly dry. The next step that they recommend in the Getting in Model book is that you outline everything with ink. And I am choosing not to take that step because I'm a little lazy and because this is a one hour class because I don't want it to take forever. The step after that, you pull out your dark shading material, which in this case is gonna be this dark red that I have. These are sample gouaches from John Neal Bookseller. I believe it's Schminky or Schminka brand gouaches. Really, I have found them to be very good quality. I'm really impressed. Actually, you know what? To give the blue more time to dry, yes, let's outline, but I'm going to outline in red because I feel like it. Ordinarily, I don't go for super teeny tiny brushes, but the brush I've been using, it's a fairly cheap brush and it's not keeping its point as well as I would like. This is a size zero. I know people who use 10 zeros and 20 zeros and everything else. I'm gonna experiment with a 10-0 later, I think, if this one doesn't behave. But so far, I'm really liking it. Your dark red, is that the Bordeaux that you were using last time? Yes, it is. I don't know why they call and it Bordeaux. Got, that, that came from John Neal? Yep. Um, oh, they have a kit they have several kits actually they have a calligrapher's kit an illuminator's kit and a deluxe kit and since i was replacing you know everything um mm -hmm. i went ahead and picked up their deluxe kit which includes calligraphy supplies and illumination supplies i and just ordinarily, need the paint though what's do that? they sell just the paint oh yeah oh yeah okay. but the kit itself has really nice materials and the best part is one of their staff members is a baroness down in that area. They're from, yep. they're in North Carolina. But she She's knows a really her nice stuff. lady. She really seems to be whenever I've talked with her. Yeah, she really knows her stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not some factory worker who's going to just grab a brush out of the bin and chuck it in your box and send it to you. She's going to make sure it's a good brush, you know. And I really. She knows what she's talking that. about. Yeah, definitely. Having someone who knows what they're talking about in customer service is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at this, remember I was talking before about having a nice large belly on your brush. This is a size zero. There are people who don't like to work with a brush even as large as a zero. And that sort of surprises me because I've been able to just go and go and go without having to constantly reload my brush. And I really appreciate that. Yeah, that's given the blue time to finish drying, which it needed. I went a little thick in a couple areas. There we go. Nice long swoopy curve. Isn't that just fun? Now in the model book, we're going to outline our stem with two parallel lines. This is a little tricky if your hand is not steady. If your hand is steady, it still takes some patience. Just go slow and careful. And you're going to go over your center line that you drew, except you're going to, when you get up in this area, this is the center line right here. 
and then you come back up to your pencil mark. There we go. Oh, look at that. That is lovely. So I told people in my last class, I tend to be as excited as you are when things turn out well. I promise I'm not bragging when I go, oh, look at that. It's more like, hey, I'm as surprised as you. <laughs> so you get those parallel lines. Those are very visible on the yellow. We're going to be less visible on the blue, but they're still important. You know what? I'm not sure if I really wanted it to be there. I think I wanted it to be here. Oh, well. I am not the world's foremost expert on acanthus leaves. I was more aiming for the shading techniques that they use in the Getting and Model book. Because I thought they were just fascinating. And if you learn this shading technique, you can use it everywhere. It's part color theory and part brush technique. Now that we have our stem outlined, we're gonna keep the same red and we're gonna put shadows on this side of the stem on both sides of the leaf, all the way up with just very, very small fine strokes. I'm gonna start on the yellow so it's a little more visible here. You follow the curve. These are just gentle, you sort of flick it. And what this is doing is shaping the leaf, giving it some curvature, you know, a little bit of 3D effect, and also adding some shadow. Nice big big-ish brush lets you do that whole thing. Let's go ahead and pull out our teaching material, not this one, the actual getting in model book. If you look, he shades all the way to the edge of the leaf and even some up on the other side of that, of that central vein here. And I don't know how well it shows on camera, but he does that on both sides of the blue um, and the gold goes quite far. And I was mistaken about where all he put it. He goes up on the top side of the blue and on the bottom side of the yellow and then the top side of the blue again, sort of exaggerating that curve. So let's do that. Let's put a bit more red here and go all the way to the edge of the leaf. Ah, too much, I blobbed. It's sort of a cross hatching technique a little bit if you're familiar with cross hatching. You can go back over your strokes and make them a little stronger in places. And now we'll do the other side of that stem and we don't go up all the way. I'm not sure if I'm completely on camera or not. I have a tendency to pull everything closer to my face and then put my face under the camera. So if at all, you, if at any point you can't see what I'm doing, yell at me. It is pretty difficult. The, I would like to see the camera closer because we're seeing your entire desk. Yeah, you're right. Let me see if I can zoom in. Oh, hey. that's good. Whoa. Much better. Let's come up here. Perfect. Uh, why did I not do that before? I apologize, everybody. Oh, yeah, that stuff is not visible. Yeah, that looks much better. Good. I'm so sorry. I should have done that at the beginning of the class, and I just completely forgot that I even have that capacity. I apologize. Yeah, no, I was even thinking of asking if you can zoom in, but... Yeah, you know, this is why I like having my students not muted. It means that I can get that kind of feedback from you. 
There we go. Sure, I have more. Okay, so we did the under the down side of the yellow. We're going to do the up side of the blue. And again, it's going to be the same technique. I just thought it was so interesting that they shaded the blue not with darker blue, you know, that, that they went ahead and went red with it instead. But this is a period, obviously period, this, this the getting in model book is from the 1400s. Um, period technique, this was, this is what they did with their color theory. Somebody walk in, aha. There's a cat in the house who just distracted me a minute. And you see how that comes up and it follows the curve of the leaf a little bit and gives it some shape. Let's see, there I go, pulling it closer to my face again. And you can shade literally anything with this particular technique, these fine, fine strokes. Clothing is a big one that gets a lot of shading. Uh, faces, very fine hair-like strokes. And remember how on the ochre we went all the way down on one side and part way on the other side. We're gonna do that again with the blue here. This is not, I mean, it's bringing it some shape, but it's not really bringing it to life, if you know what I mean. That is what the white is for, and the white will do things that make you very happy indeed. Uh, there is a mid-realm laurel, Maestrin Katarina Helena von Schönborn, who teaches a class just on white work, especially as it applies to uh, capital letters. And um, it's amazing the difference that adding that white does. It just really makes things pop. I actually like the white work stage of my work when I get to it. All right, that is so much better. Why did I not zoom in at the beginning of this class? Ah, does that work for everybody? Is everyone, does anyone need a minute to get caught up to where I'm at right now? It is, it is much better. I never understood what you did with your diagonal lines with your two points. Did not get that. So um, I'll have Let to uh, look at the video again. Yeah, here we go. Let's zoom in on this again. This is a, this is a twisty leaf. It twists, it, it curves here. You're half, it's half on. Ah, thank you. There we go. It curves here and then it curves here and it just keeps curving in that same direction and that's what makes it twist instead of flip. If it goes back the other way, like this one comes up and then down, that's a flip. May I take a photo of these two lined up? Absolutely, go for it. Let me, let me move some things out of the way so it's a little bit better, easier for you to see. There we go, is that good? Just let me know when you're finished. Yes, thank you. Sure. Now for the fun part. You're ready for your white paint. You want your white to be fairly opaque, but you don't want to put too much of it on your brush at a time. Because if you get a blobby tip, you're hosed. And that's the technical term there also. I strongly prefer working with Doc Martin's bleed proof white, but not everybody owns that. And at the moment, neither do I. If you feel like you've got too much paint or if you're worried that you've got too much paint, you can take your paper towel and just tap it to get any excess liquid to 
wick out of the bristles. The opposite side. We'll start on the yellow. We're gonna come up here and around. You see how it follows the curve again, so that you could imagine that these line up together. Let me put this a little bit better. Is that better? Yes. Okay. We'll come up here and do it again. Now for the blue, we'll flip it over and do the other side. Again, you want your paint nice and opaque for this. You don't want to work too thin. You don't want to work too dry. There we go. These are just flick strokes. I'm not, I'm not carefully drawing a curve. I'm flicking. Flick, 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 flick. See how that works? I cannot believe I didn't zoom in before. I could harp on that for another half hour, but I won't. And then the final step on these is to highlight the vein itself. And what you're gonna do is just put dots. Carefully and patiently down the middle of that stem or vein or whatever you wanna call it. Yeah, I really, should have just kept my pencil line. So how are your results working for you at home so far, everybody? Actually, better than expected. I'm, I'm really new to this and so far so good. That's great. With colored pencils, it's even working. So thank you. Hey. That's great. The medieval masters knew what they were talking about. All I'm doing yeah. is copying. <laughs> and there it is. That's it. You're done. Um, Wonderful. If you wanted, you could have this wrapped around or flipping around. The spiral works better for this. You put like a rod up the center and then you have the leaf just twist around it all the way. But the spiral leaf works better for that. Um, you can pick different color schemes. You want things that look nice together, like blue and purple. I'm sorry, purple and red orange, uh, blue and gold, you know, things like that. It, it looks more pleasing. Now, for my teaching aid, I use a bright yellow and a bright red. And I'm not sure how I feel about it. But even there, the technique still works. You can see it all the way along. It looks like on this one, and let me consult the original. It looks like I can add just a smidge more white in a couple of places, just a couple. Too much, too much, too much. Whenever you're doing fine detail work like this, double check that your brush is not blobbed at the tip. Ooh, 
if you go to the other side of the leaf, and I'm not sure you really should, it's not in my period example, but don't go as far. Like this one comes about halfway down the leaf, this one is barely frosting the tip of it. There we go. And that is a flippy leaf from the Getting and Model book. I'm going to put my glasses on and check the time real quick. Uh, we have 15 minutes, which is not really time to do the black hours one that I had hoped to do. But I will say that this very broad, wide acanthus leaf that you see in the period examples that you see in the Getting and Model book is not the only way to do a leaf. Um, I've seen an awful lot of them that look like wet feathers. And I will demonstrate for you a wet feather because I, they're fun. You come up and around and operating just from the center here. And there's where you cross over. Huh. See what I mean? Wet feathers. Quick too. They're very quick. If you're in a hurry, go with wet feathers instead. And yeah. ugly acanthus leaves are period. They don't have to look gorgeous like the Getting in Model book. Um, I have seen some, I think even in the Getting in Model book, at, towards the end where it looked like they didn't quite have a control over where the twist was supposed to happen. Or it twisted to the same direction twice or not yeah. quite the way it was supposed to. Or uh, for this particular skinny style, they tend to not show a twist, they just cross over. So you can go like this, and then you can go like this and just cross at that point. Is this visible? Where am I going? Right here is where I wanna be. So you draw your wave. In the black hours, this is what the leaves look like actually. But they are gold and silver, so we forgive them. <laughs> because they look so spectacular, you don't care that the twists maybe don't make sense. You have an example of the book of hours? Of, of a black That's hours? The black um, ones, yeah. I, Yes, yeah, okay. sports of black hours are what I'm thinking of. I do not right now. I originally, I made an artist trading card in the black hour style and it was beautiful. And I have pictures of it on my phone, but I do not physically have the card anymore, which is irritating, but it is what it is. House fires are very irritating things to go through. Um, you'll sometimes find, especially in manuscripts, where this has another leaf that comes past it. It's really great how quick these are. So you have a twist or a flip right there. So this would be color A, and this would be color A, and then behind it, this would be color A. And then this would be color B. I've seen them in blue and gold. I've seen them in blue and actual gold, not just yellow, but like shell gold, glittery, sparkly. I've seen blue and brown. Blue is a very popular color to use. The Getting and Model book uses red and green, uh, red and purple, a different shade of red and purple. Uh, and then this blue and gold, and there's, I think there's one other, but I can't recall it. But if you look at the link that I sent that, that was included in this event uh, page, you should be able to find it. Or I did also post when the class was moved up, I posted about it and had uh, the link in the SCA scribes group and the scribes and illumination group and everywhere else that I could think of. So hopefully you'll be able to find it. 
If not, you can do a search online for the Getting In Model Book or message me and I will send you the link personally. But there, there we are. This is it. This is how it looks. This is our finished Thank piece. You. That's absolutely beautiful. Yes, getting the right colors, so much. getting the right colors is definitely a big part of it. This bright yellow and bright red, yeah, it shows it, but it's not pretty. This dark gold and dark red, I am very pleased with. See what I mean? I'm just as surprised as you are. And it, it may have been intuitive, but you see how your dots got closer together towards the end of the leaf as the leaf was petering out? Uh -huh. And the, the paint was getting more faded on your brush, and it all just happened very organically. There's it really does. You're more faded. Yes, it really mm -hmm. does. Um, does anybody have any other questions about this technique or anything like that? No, no but th thank you. This has been probably the most helpful Acanthus class I've been I've taken so far. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> yes. The drawing and the painting actually makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> yeah, the, the getting and model book step is by step. A, yeah, yeah. The getting and model book is a terrific source to learn how to do this. And then but they they assume that you already know how to draw it. So I'm really glad that working through my steps for drawing it made sense. It's a technique that I use. I don't know if it is the right technique. So if you find a better way to get that to work for you, by all means, go for it. Don't let, don't let what I did today dictate the style. Because again, we got scrawny wet feathers. And we've got very broad, more realistic looking leaves, except for the color. I was curious, I went online. There is such a thing as an acanthus bush and their leaves, they're green. <laughs> But they really do look a lot like this. They also look, where are we? Here's one with, that's not gonna flip. It comes out and in. See that triple lobe thing? Very deep and out and in. I, I think that the Gertigan Mollet book is really a stylized version. I've seen plants oh, yeah. different. Um, mm -hmm. But you've broken this down into, into nice, simplistic form, and I think that's what really makes a huge difference for being able to reproduce it. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Yeah. I've seen some very realistic looking leaves. I've seen some where they come up and they do that, so they look more like oak leaves almost even, or like that. Or, I mean, I've not really seen pointy ones, but you could do it. But all these different lobe shapes from botanical to slightly stylized botanical to, okay, whatever you say, German scribe guy, to, to wet feathers. They're, they're all different, but depending on your time period and your source material, they're all valid. Mm -hmm. exactly. I, am, I am thrilled that this worked for you guys. I really am. I wasn't quite sure how it was gonna go because as I said, when I first, envision this class, I was thinking in terms of the shading technique, which I still need to learn myself. I, mean, I still need to perfect. But everybody I've talked to said they were looking forward to learning how to draw the leaves. And I thought, oh, this could get interesting. This could get really interesting really quick. So I'm glad that that was not the case. I'm glad that this was helpful for everybody. How do you spell the, the German book? Is it Göttingen? Yeah, G-O-E or G-O with an umlaut. T-T-I-N-G-E-N, getting in. And I will be happy to send you that link if you just message me on Facebook. Can you show the other spiral style? The spiral style, spiral style. Here we are. Thank you. Sure. I could even try to paint that one, but I'm not sure I trust myself. Besides, we've only got five minutes left of the class. The main thing to look for in a, in a, in a flippy, it goes up and then down. 
the twists go in two different directions, up and down. In this one, it goes up and up. And that's what makes it a spiral is that it keeps twisting in the same direction. That was very helpful, thank you. Sure, yeah. Are there any other questions or comments or anything like that? <laughs>